Good morning, everybody. I usually like to learn a little bit more before I make a video, especially if they wind up being long. <laughs> and I don't wind up uh, getting to learning while I'm driving, but I, I felt this is an important video to make. Uh, you know, at first, for a long time, you know, I, I've learned the wisdom of the Gedola Yisrael. Because when a lot of the Gedolim came out against this guy Yossi Mizrahi and banned him from speaking in, in shuls and, and, and so forth, myself and my friend Rabbi Mesa, we came to his defense. And, and so to their student, uh, this uh, Mizrahi's student, uh, Ruven, Yaron Ruven, uh, who's a real gangster, a real dangerous person. Uh, you know, you just hear how he talks. He sounds like a, a lowlife, like a thug. You know, I work in a prison. He sounds like an inmate, you know. And he, and, and we came to their defense because they're Shermit Torah Mitzvahs, ostensibly so. So they had a different view. And in the interest of, and, and we both came to their defense independently. <coughs> but it, and because in the interest of intellectual diversity and in the interest of defending someone who is a Shemr Torah Mitzvah, we came to their defense. Um, now, the fact that they started to attack both of us personally, two nobodies, two weirdos, uh, I mean, they're also nobodies. They're less nobodies, you know. Look who thinks he's a nobody, right? <laughs> There's an old joke like that, that the... Uh, the rabbi on Yom Kippur, he's clapping al Khaid, oh, I'm a nobody, and then the cantor, oh, I'm a nobody, and then the president of the shul, he's like, oh, I'm a nobody, and the cantor turns to the rabbi, look who thinks he's a nobody. <laughs> so, but that, uh, you know, that they come out, first of all, to attack the chief rabbis of England, particularly Lord Jonathan Sachs, Zeich Hatzak, Vekodesh Levrocha, I might have disagreed with him about Zionism, not that that's anybody for me, but I follow other Rabbanim and disagree with him about Zionism. Uh, but he was a God of Israel. And he was the Marda Asra of, of the United Synagogue. And so too, Rabbi Mervis, also he's the Marda Asra of the United Synagogue. And, his, and also their attacks, which was really when I started to argue against the, both of them, uh, when they started to attack the chief rabbi of Boca Raton, Florida, uh, Rabbi Goldberg. Who's a voile yid? He's a tzaddik. He's a sweetheart, like they would say in Israel, motek. You know, and and he and he's and they attacked my rebbe from high school, not my rebbe, but my rebbe from high school, who is a rebbe. He's a, the Woodmere rebbe, a Moshe Weinberger, a big tzaddik, a, a big mashpia to the to, to the whole klal Yisrael. And so, therefore, you know, when, when you know when you start attacking everybody, if you're just attacking a weirdo like me, like Joe Kolakowski, Rif Zichun Kablen a chaplain who, who who is out of the box, or my friend Rabbi Meza, also, he, he'd be the first to admit he's out of the box. He's not mainstream, right? People wonder how are you two friends when you, you know you're you're a Hasidic Shayid who you know obviously you believe. Uh, Kabbalah is something that's important, and uh, and he doesn't believe in that. He follows the other Rishonim, even certain Achronim, who have different views. And uh, you know, and not that I'm a Lubavitcher Chosid in any way, shape, or form, but the Lubavitcher Rebbe was friends with Rav Kapach, who who didn't believe that the Zerah Kodesh was was authentic, right? And they were good friends. You could be friends with people you disagree with. That's that's the biggest thing that you have to, that these guys have to learn. That 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 uh, you know uh, Mizrahi and Ruvain. When you're in that, what do they call bubble chamber? I don't know what's the echo chamber. You, you only listen to people that you agree with, and 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 everybody else is a heretic. You know, this is the issue. Meaning, you go and attack the chief rabbi of England. Why? Because he follows the Messiah that they have, which all the Gedolim in the all Gedolim Achronim, who, if you were a chief rabbi of a town, 
part of your job was to maintain positive relations with the clergy of, of the other faiths. That's just the reality that we live in in Golos. And so you're going to be upset because they're Vinchtun, you know, good greetings to the, to people from the other religions. That's his job. That's what. That's the whole job of the chief rabbi of England. That's and that's part of the, why, the reason why there is the United Synagogue, which is modern Orthodox, and why there are the Haredi communities, which respect the United Synagogue but respectfully disagree with them, and that's okay. You can respectfully disagree. But you don't. Go, <coughs> But I never heard, and yes, and the same thing, uh, all right, someone who is a, I, I don't really even believe that, that he wrote this, because there are a lot of people who, who play strings with a lot of the Gedolim and Eretz Yisrael, but someone who is a Manda Amar, and someone who understands, a very worldly person who is very Haredi, would be Moreno, really, probably the Gedol, from the Gedoli Ador is Rabbi Shishtern. The echte gedolei ador, the real thing, everybody recognizes is Rav Moshe Sternbach. So his unsigned shlita, a tremendous, tremendous, incredible person. Um, now he might have echoed that he personally had some issues with with things that that uh, that Lord Jonathan Sachs, Echad Sachal Rocha, certain shitas that he held, certain. Hirushim that he gave on things, that, and so too Rabbi Mervis. Also, they're, they're trying to bring out in Yonim that were important in order to to uh, help people reflect, help people deal with things in life, psychological, mental health. The things that they were trying to bring out were very important, and and they were true. <laughs> I mean, it's a, and the way. The, that you, some of these Pashka villain that came up, I have a very hard time being the Kabo that uh, Rav Moshe Sternbach, who's a, already he's a Zuckin Wolf look now, that he actually was familiar with all of the things going on, and that he, even though he's very fluent in English, and, you know, he well, you know, he lived in South, he's from South Africa, you know, he's a, he's not an old Yushalmi, Wingatina uh, Strimal, but you know. Um, I, I uh, you know, I have a hard time believing that he actually. Sometimes, you know, they did this to to um, uh, what was his name, Rav Yashiv, They used to play games, and they do it to Rav Chaim Kanievsky also. They play games. These Pashka villain put their signatures on things that they never said and never knew about. So it's it's not so plush. It, you know, some of the, when you, when you see these Pashka villains that they put up, and you know, so I, 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 I you know, and you're not supposed to make a lush and horror. You're not supposed to, and certainly not make shamra. And there's certain, you know, this whole issue about mental health, and you know, that you know, particularly that that Eov would be a, a, a figure that that has to be defended. You know that 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 that, that you have to say that Eov didn't have mental health issues and, and and what that has to do. I mean, you know, it's a very strange. The whole thing is, you know, very strange. This is this is what they had to write in the Pashkal, and it's it, it shows there's something there's something not right here, but. I'm not talking here, and, and if and if Rav Sternbach, who I have the utmost respect for, if he did write that, all right, elu elu, right? Sof kol sof. These are different chetzeres, and so it's appropriate for Rav Sternbach to say for for people who are from the Eidah Haredes that they're abonim from the United Synagogue. You know, they're not our abonim. They're not, our, but. But you can still have a respectful disagreement, right? And you don't you don't go and call everybody a happy chorus and a, and a min and a and a koifer, you know, unless they really are, unless they're koifer on the yidgim alikrim. That's what's usually accepted, and do so in a manner that is liturgical, because the only things that really can be dvarim shbeleiv enim dvarim. That's that's a poshut. 
halacha that everybody knows, Dvarim Shabalei Venim Dvarim, which means to say, even if someone professes doubts and, and discusses issues in order to come to, to be Mavake Shayemes, right, if, if, if in the end of the day, they daven three times a day, and, and, and the second broch of, of Shemun Esri, they say, Baruch HaTo Hashem, Mechayehem Esim, Mechayehem Metim, right? He resurrects the dead. That blessed art thou, O Lord, who resurrects the dead, and which is understood that he will resurrect the dead also. So whether, or even if someone has a, 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 in sophistry, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a dialogue, in the, you know, in the platonic sense, about how to understand how to make a cobble this acre of, of Tchiyas Amesim, as long as they recite the liturgy, then Alpi Halacha, they're considered a mommy. Because that's really, you know, that's the reason why Chazal put it into, really Yitzchuk Avinu, we, we're told, to put it into the liturgy. And, and, but Chazal, I mean, Yitzchuk Avinu composed it, but, but Chazal <coughs> legislated that we should recite this three times a day. That's the test to show that you're, you're a mamin, that you're reciting this liturgy, or you want to say two times a day because it feels harvest or shus, right? That, which means Shemun you still have to say the Pikr's Kriyashma by harvest and the Sufali Alma. I know some of my friends, they want to argue that that, that, that the Iker Adin is Tfilis harvest or shus. All right, no, go ahead. You know, you, you, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it, it, it takes another two minutes to say, Shmanesri, what's the big deal? But, you know, so, so we, and, and also the Klaus rules, Makabot, so it is, the Torah's Choyva on your, your, your Parish Minat Sibir, if you don't say, if you don't say Shmanesri by Arvis, and, and uh, you know, with Parish Minat Sibir, it's, it's a serious thing, but Parish Minat Sibir has a, a halachic ramification of what means a Parish Minat Sibir. Parish Minat Sibir doesn't mean that you have a different shita about... Parish Minat Sibir has a halachic meaning, which would mean something like not davening, not davening Mariv, um, you know, not saying the Bir Kris Kriyashma Mariv, that's, that's a Pesheya, that's, that's already someone who's, who's not fulfilling their obligations. But to not say the Shemun Esrei, so Me'ekra Din... It's it's a rishus, but it's a rishus that the whole klal was makabel. So you're parshim and sefer, you know. And certainly the way Chazal and the way the Rambam and the Rishonim and the Achreinim say, if someone was was uh, doesn't fast, you know, Tuesday is is uh, is is, is, is sarbatevus, and you're not going to fast in a sarbatevus. That's a parshim and sefer, unless you have a, a health reason why you're not fasting. But I'm saying if you have a legitimate reason not to fast. And also, if, if, even you're not fasting because you have a legitimate health reason not to fast. Sof kol sof, you're going to uh, you're going to say slichus. You're going to say avinu malkeinu something. You're going to you're going to do some liturgic, you know, liturgical expression to show that this is a day that the, the Klal Yisrael has of avelus of mourning. But you know, but that that that's it. But to say. All right, you, you, you know, ways, uh, you know, uh, you, you're an Ashkenazi, you're going to eat, eat uh, kidney of so Pesach. That's, that's not Parish Minat I'm sorry, it's not. Unless you live in a, a Kehila where the Rav is mocked on such things. You know, I know in Curacao, uh, Rav Aaron Teidelbaum says, the Sephardim who live there, if you are in Curacao, while you're within the gvulus of Kirisiol, he asks that you, you, you don't need kidneys, right? So, but it's mashma to me, even though I didn't hear from him, I heard from other people, but it's mashma to me. So that means um, if, if they go to Muncie for Pesach, they, they could eat kidneys. I don't know. You know, just while they're there in Kirisiol, no kidneys, right? But anyway, but he's the Mar the Asra, and, he, and his. And he has uh, he has authority in in his town where he's Maradasra, and so too there's similar things, you know, that that uh, this discussion of you know Rabbi Goldberg is Maradasra in 
or Kraton. Now, all right, in America, Efshir, Mekemachana, Aigana, Bismedrish, that's also not so posh. To be the first one whose parents gather to make a second Bismedrish in the, in the, in the community, it, it, you're already, that, that's the problem. When, when it's already a third or the fourth one, maybe not. It's a big problem, you know, in our community we have like that, that people try to make minyanim without rishus from the Mara Astra, because we're a small community, it, it, and it causes it causes both financial and and liturgical issues for our community, that people make their own minyanim. Um, so... These, these are the issues to, to deal with. So anyway... Uh, I'm, I'm not the Mardasra, I'm just, I'm just a, a member of the Kehillah, who, you know, I, I've got something, a title as assistant rabbi, just more or less for legal purposes, so I can perform weddings and things, you know, and, and I do serve the congregation, you know, I'll be Balkore, whatever it is, I'll give a drush if the rub isn't there, things like that. So, so if we have a Mardasra, and he's the one who passed so, you know, what what we do in our Kehillah, and how, within the Kehillah structure, within how the community operates. So, um, and, 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 you know, that type of chutzpah, to go and say that, 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 that Rabbi Goldberg, because you don't like a guest speaker that he brought in, that now he's, you know, that, that, that you, you, that's not how Yiddishkeit works. We have a, a Kehillah system, we have a Merdasra, and he makes a decision, and certainly you don't go and have people harass and make threats of violence, Against that speaker, who who is, you know, he didn't know he's doing anything wrong. He, you know, these type of issues are really quite quite serious. You know, that's the, uh, you know, this is what we're dealing with. You know, and and so this is the point that I want to bring out in this little speech, is that if they were if. If Mizrahi and Ruvain were only attacking me and, and Rabbi Mesa, and not attacking the chief rabbi of England, and not ch- attacking Rabbi Goldberg, and not attacking Ra- Rabbi Weinberger, and not attacking all of these Choshev Rabbonim, that then. Uh, Then there could be what to discuss, but the fact that they and and my friend Ruben Teller, who should know a lot better, he's not a dummy, but he unfortunately has an extremist thing that's ruined his life. And you, wake up already! I don't I don't want to attack you personally, but you haven't seen how much your extremism has ruined your life. You know, the whole Williamsburg is talking about, you know, about how you know how extreme you are and how that's ruined your life. Wake up! You know, don't be a fool. I'm saying this because I love you, and I know you can do better than these mishigoyim, like like a, 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 a real criminal lowlife like Yaron Ruvain, or you know, or 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 a maneuver like Yossi Mizrahi. You have choshev erlecher rabbanim. You have you have Tadra Silver. You have big. You have you have. Uh, Rosenberger dying, whoever else you go to, stick to that. Don't you don't need these these uh, these mishagoyim. And then you're asking me why am I still friends with with Roshar Meza? One thing is he stands up against evil, he stands up against Zionism, and he stands up against leftism. So, and these are two issues that are very near and dear to my heart. Not to say that I hate people who are religious Zionists. They are my brothers. The religious Zionists are my brothers. And that's why I'm defending, you know, Rabbi Ephraim, Harav Ephraim Goldberg, and I'm defending the chief rabbis of England. Even if they're religious Zionists, they're, they're not hurting anybody, they're doing good things. All right, they have a different shita. You know, it's not like how the, the, the Rabbanu in Israel, they're hurting people. They're, they're you know, I, there was someone who, who Rav Asher and I converted, and then the, the Rabbanu told them, no, that conversion's not good enough. You got to come to Israel, and you got to convert in Israel. And then she got killed in a terror attack. She'd still be alive if not for Zionism. These types of things we have to stand up against. 
<coughs> this nonsense that Rabbi Cook, who was a, a voile yid, he was a tzaddik, but he was severely mentally ill, and you, you can't hold anything that he said to, to have any weight. You know, and he was supporting, you know, the, the, the Syrian community, who I love, they're good people, but they, they should wake up after what happened with Elia Havila, that they, that they are doing something wrong, and, and, and they should not have been following Rabbi Cook's ideology there, that you have to go to Israel to convert, all that nonsense, but it was never, there was never such a thing in Kali Yisrael, that you can only convert, in, but Elia Havila also got with this nonsense, and he also, Rahman Lutzlan, got got by, by this, by this terrorist, Yaron Ruvain, so, this is what, this is what, I, what, what I have to say, you know, if, if you were just attacking me, and you're just attacking Osher, there would be something to look into. And we were defending them in the old days, right? There would be something to look into. Oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe we have to look at what we're doing. But you're going to attack the chief rabbi of England? You're going to attack the, the chief rabbi, Boko de Raton? You're going to attack the Woodmere Rebbe? You're going to attack people who are really the Mardasra, who have authority in their community? And you're going to attack those people? That, that just shows that Rabbi Asher and I are in the are in the same chutzah as the chief rabbis of England. <laughs> you know, that were mamish roi la You know, the, o- the only thing is they throw in there the the, the one who's really a koifer from, from California. All right, he's taka koifer, <coughs> right? And he does really bad stuff. To, he's a conservative rabbi. What's his name? He used to I, I used to see him on, on that show. Uh, Hal Ying. You know, he's he's like sixty years old. He looks like he's twenty years old. Who's that guy? I'm trying to remember his name. He was on the show uh, Secrets of the Bible. Um, we used to watch when we were kids on A and E. You know, they had they had uh, Leonard Nimoy, you know, narrating the Secrets of the Bible. And they'd have this rabbi from, uh, from California. I don't remember. It's David Wolpe. I it's Taka Kaifer, right? Everyone knows he's a koifer, so that's a little bit of MS you have to throw into your shocker. Because look, oh, this guy is really a koifer. Everybody knows he's a koifer. He doesn't pretend to be orthodox. He's, you know, he's, he's a, a very liberal conservative rabbi who does things that, not only like the egalitarian things that make her a din or kosher. You know, that's the thing. You have some conservative rabbis who they follow halacha and they believe in Torah, and they believe that halacha is binding, right, but, but if you're going to be per scatter the way that he does, and also express things that are kfira, that he's kfira, you see us Mitzrayim, you know, <laughs> all right, but that doesn't mean, you know, that, I, that, that, that I'm in the, in the, in the category, me and Usher were in the category of David Wolpe, just because they also mentioned David Wolpe, because he's the one guy that they mentioned who's Taka Kaifer, you know. Even Shmuley Boteach is not a Kaifer, all right? He's edgy, he's out of the box, you know. We're maybe in that category of, of people, you know, who, you know, don't really have any authority and maybe do things that are out of the box, maybe do things to get attention, maybe do things this and that. But self pol self he's, he's a Hasid Shid, you know. But, uh, you know, he's a Sherman Turn Mitzvah, you know. So... You know, uh, and, and, he, and, he's, and he's a very humble person, Taka. We, we, he came to, to our shul the, uh, the last year in the summer. He came to Daven with St. Kaddish. He drove up on a bicycle and, uh, you know, and uh, I said to the Rav, oh, we have a Maradu Achush of a Gast, you know? And he's, no, no, no. Sh-. And, he, and the rabbi didn't know who he was, you know? It's like, <laughs> so. Um, these types of things, but self so I, 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 it's it's not the tzushtel to David Bolton. It's a, it's a tzushtel, at least the Shmuley Boteach, who's, who's a voile yid, even though he's outside the box. And then it's a, it's a, and it could be tzushtel to, uh, certainly Ramesh Weinberger is one of my rebbeim, and he doesn't support every, and, and you know, a lot of my rebbeim, some of my rebbeim say, you know, they disagree with Usher Mesa, but they, they recognize a good person. Other people say they agree with him, but they don't like him personally, you know? And I have other uh, different, and some say, oh, he's a Michigan. You know, I have different rebbeim I talk to about these things, and, but self-co-self, you know, it's, uh, 
I'm friends with him. Like I said, like Lubavitcher Rebbe was friends with Rav Kapach. We can be friends with people we disagree with. You know, because and he's not doing anything negative. I, I came out against it. My, it was still a friend. Moshe Otero was still a friend, but I, I rebuked him with, with, with Nimretzis, you know, that I'm saying he he's wrong uh, to make, uh, even though, and, and the other Rabbanim that he follows, all right, he has the right to follow his Rabbanim, and if he wants to get smicha from them, he can. Years ago, I gave him some kind of a ksav smicha, you know, the, the, not the, you know, just uh, Rabbanim, like I gave to Asher, I've given to other people, they said they needed it, it helped them out. You know, so uh, and, and, I, and I give people smicha because of what Rabbi Pinchas Karitzer said that that it's a mitzvah to help people out. It's going to help people with something. But so far, so I I so strongly chaylik on this idea of making gerus on Zoom without you know one thing you, you want to oversee and you have gimel head yotis there. In the in the you know by the mikveh, it's a different story, and, and you want to make sure they're doing things properly. That that that's 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 okay, but to say that uh, that the Besdin can convene on Zoom and watch the Tvila and, and the Kabbalah and Mitzvahs on Zoom, and then you're going to charge a lot of money for, for that, you know, meaning there's Charbatola to Schlepzich to, you know, you're going to go somewhere and and uh, and, and that that's a legitimate reason for the best to take money, it's Charbatala 